So, Latines, it's time you got some love. For the past two seasons, all anyone has ever run is just storm grenades and heart of it must light, leaving full time sunbreakers without a job. Now, granted, I know we're kind of personally responsible for some of this. Lord of Thunder is just too good of a build. However, as of this season, one of the best things to use is Merciless. We did a DPS test here recently, and Merciless is absolutely popping off, guys. Literally, one of the best DPS options in the game. But today, we're actually going to be taking this a step forward and combining it with a build that focuses is on survivability, support, as well as that DPS. It's a bit of an odd play style, but one that you'll come to appreciate once you get the damage rolling. So to start with the build, you'll want to hop on Sunbreaker Titan subclass. Super really isn't important, so just pick your favorite here. But for our abilities, we chose Towering Barricade, which creates that large barrier that can be used to reinforce a position with cover from enemy fire. We also have our Throwing Hammer, which we can throw from a distance, and picking up our Throwing Hammer fully recharges our melee ability. Also, striking a target allows when picking up our hammer to grant us cure. We're also combining this with healing grenades, a grenade that cures allies on impact and creates an orb of benevolent solar light, granting restoration to allies when picked up. Now for our aspects, we chose Soul Invictus, which say the solar ability final blows, hammer of soul impacts, and defeating scorched targets create sunspots. Your abilities regenerate faster and your super drains more slowly while standing in a sunspot. The sunspots apply scorch and deal damage to targets inside, and entering a sunspot applies restoration. Now Roaring Flames is also what we're utilizing, say is that final blows with solar abilities or ignitions increase the damage of your solar abilities. This actually stacks up to three times, and while Roaring Flames is active, your uncharged melee attacks deal solar damage and scorches targets. Now for our fragments, we chose Ember of Epyrian, where solar weapons or ability final blows extends the duration of restoration and radiant effects apply to you. We also have Ember of Solace, which says that radiant and restoration effects apply to you have increased duration. Ember of Tempering, which says that solar weapon final blows grant you and your allies increase recovery for a short duration. This stacks up to three times. And Ember of Torches, where power melee attacks against combatants makes you and nearby allies radiant. Now, our exotic weapons of choice is, of course, Merciless. Now, a couple of key takeaways about Merciless. Number one, it's doing a hell of a lot of damage due to its rework and its buff. Stated in update 6.3.0, the decreased charge time on hit no longer resets on kill or on reload and now works on a five second timer. The timer is also refreshed when landing hits. This means you can pretty much always keep Merciless fully amped with that increased charge rate. And if you're rocking the exotic catalyst, this of course is really leveling the weapon out even more with that increase in stability and that increase in range. And the beautiful thing that I love about this is that impetus, which is the trait, which says that reloading immediately after a kill increases weapon damage for a short time. Used to in the past, by the time you reloaded and actually got the weapon amped up at that full rate of fire, impetus was already gone. Now though, shown with our damage testing, if you proc impetus, you can immediately turn over and blow your load with Merciless with ease and still take advantage of that damage buff. Now, the end game of this build is to buff this damage as much as possible and turn it from pretty good to an absolute champion melting machine. Now, keep in mind for those that are actually reading the exotic perk conserve momentum, it may look like nothing has changed, but again, the UI wasn't updated to reflect this adjustment in update 6.3.0. So again, the decreased charge time on hit no longer longer resets on kill or on reload and now works on a five second timer. Again, that timer is simply refreshed when landing hits. So to say that this increases Merciless's usability substantially is actually an understatement. It's phenomenal. Again, before it was arguably one of the worst exotics in the game. Now it's one of the best. Now this build will also feature another not so common weapon you see out in the wild called Fire Fright. This is a seasonal weapon from Season the Haunted. It's also craftable. So once you get the patterns, which you can focus for at the Crown of sorrow. There's no RNG involved in getting the role that we want. More on that later. Now for our exotic armor, we did set on the best option to buff Merciless's damage, and that is of course Path of Burning Steps. It comes with the trait Firewalker, where solar final blows periodically grant you an escalating bonus to weapon damage. You're actually harder to slow or freeze with stasis, and when you break out, you take no damage from doing so, creating a burst of solar energy around yourself. Now the main benefit here is of course the damage buff. This buff stacks up to four times, and at four stacks, you gain a whopping 40% increase to weapon damage. This is as high as empowering buffs can get, so there's really no better option. Now, finally, for our mods, you'll need solar gauntlets, boots, and class item. And on our helmets, we of course have fusion rifle ammo finder, which increases your chances of finding ammo. For your fusion rifle, harmonic siphon, which says that rapid weapon final blows with damage, matching your subclass creates an orb of power. And font of might, we're picking up an elemental well that matches your subclass energy type, grants temporary bonus to a weapon damage of that same elemental type. You can already see where we're going here with the stacking. 
attacking. Now in our gauntlets, we have overload rounds for stunning champions, impact induction, which causing damage with a melee attack reduces your grenade cooldown. And well of ordnance, we're picking up a solar elemental well, grants you additional grenade energy. Multiple copies of this mod also increases this effect. Now in our chest piece, we have melee well maker. Energy diffusion substrate is also still bugged at the time, so it's really not granting any stacking benefits. So choose other resist mods based on what you need. And on our boots, we have fusion rifle scavenger, as well as innervation, which reduces the grenade cooldown each time you pick up an orb of power and another well of ordnance mod. Now in a class item, we have bomber, which reduces grenade cooldown when using our class ability. Now the artifact mod we're using is monochromatic maestro. We're dealing damage with an elemental ability, grants increased damage to weapons of the same element for a short duration. And dealing damage with an elemental weapon grants increased damage to abilities of the same element for a short duration. And of course, bountiful wells, where elemental well mods that cause you to spawn elemental wells can now stack. Also, spawns an additional well for each additional copy of the mod you have equipped. Now let's dive into how this works. So starting from the beginning, our primary goal here is to buff Merciless as much as possible. Now in a perfect world, we would just use Merciless all the time. Kills of the weapon would increase its rate of fire, reloading would buff its damage, and picking up solar wells and getting solar kills would buff weapon damage because of burning steps. We could pick between Monochromatic Maestro or even Solar Operative depending on if we have teammates. This is a build that can do both, but we do recommend it be used with a fire team, so we pick Maestro. Solar Operative is a higher damage buff at 50% versus the 10% though, and we most recently used it with our Velis build. By the way, feel free to check that one out. The major problem with Merciless is that it chews through ammo. Once that rate of fire actually skyrockets, it's very easy to run out of ammo, leaving us out to dry. Now the play style surrounding Path of Burning Steps also requires constant killing because not every solo kill grants a stack of Firewalker. The buff lasts for 10 seconds, but to refresh, it's not uncommon to require multiple enemy kills. Now you can see the clashing ideas here. Low ammo, but to buff, it needs you to consume lots of ammo or abilities. We have ammo finder and scavenger mods to alleviate this, but it's not going to be enough if we want to maintain damage buffs, which enters our first solution, our throwing hammer. As long as you can pick up a hammer after you throw it, it's fully refunded, and this means you have the potential to chain infinite solar kills. Roaring flames will buff ability regeneration and restoration when we stand inside and make us radiant, which is a 25% solar weapon buff, and we combine this with Fount of Might for another 25% solar weapon buff. This works very well for general playlist content, but as soon as we jump into things like Legend and Master difficulties, we have another issue, consistent survivability. And as soon as light level climbs, melee kills become much, much harder. We can't get super close to enemies, and melees don't kill on the first hit. And if we can't get into our sunspot, we don't get any health regeneration. We need something to kickstart our engagements. This introduces healing grenades. These cure us and grant us restoration times one. We can increase restoration duration with Ember of Solace to six seconds and extend that timer with Ember of Empyrean. And any solar ability and weapon final blow will give us four more seconds of restoration. This actually gives us enough health regeneration to engage with higher level enemies. And now that we've procced restoration, the next question is how do we keep it? Ember of Empyrean grants increased duration of restoration and radiance when we get kills with solar weapons or abilities. We could just default to our melee and merciless, but what we found is that we needed something more consistent, something that we can use to extend restoration without eating into our special ammo, and of course, relying on our abilities. This is actually where Fire Fright enters the ring. This weapon comes with a trait that is not extraordinarily common, and on a craftable weapon, no less, Osmosis. Now, Osmosis changes the damage type of the weapon to match that of your subclass when you use your grenade. This lasts until you stow the weapon. Now, what's important to remember here is you don't need to get a kill with your grenade. So healing grenades, which actually have a very short cooldown, will actually activate osmosis, turning this weapon into a solar weapon, allowing us to keep restoration active as long as we can get kills. It will also activate Ember of Tempering, giving us increased recovery as well. But that's not all. It also solves another issue we have, getting solar kills to grant us Firewalker stacks from Path of Burning Steps, which will also now buff Fire Fright's damage. Now, this won't stack with Radiance, but after a few kills, we will easily surpass it. Radiance, like our healing grenades, exist to kickstart engagements. No kills required. Just use the ability. Now we can throw down a healing grenade to get restoration, extend the duration with fire fright, enter an engagement with constant healing to secure melee kills with no risk of dying, and use our hammer to generate solar wells, which will buff our solar weapon damage and grant us back substantial amounts of grenade energy because bountiful wells, two times well of ordnance mod, and of course impact induction. Now if you get two melee kills, expect to get your healing grenade right back. We can also use our class ability to give us grenade energy because of bomber and orbs of light generated from kills with fire fright because of harmonic siphon will also give us grenade energy because of innovation. So essentially guys, the gameplay loop here, pop your healing grenade, proceed to get a kill with Fire Fright, secure one to two kills with your melee, keep 
you getting kills with abilities and fire frights now with its damage increase and when you see a high health enemy swap to merciless kill a weak ad reload to proc impetus do massive damage with everything combined swap back to fire frights rinse and repeat now for damage numbers when we tested this on carl we actually got 48,812 damage per burst to 126,067 damage per burst guys there's a 158 percent increase in damage for merciless with firewalker times four font of might monochromatic maestro and impetus now the 1893 damage per shot to 3471 that is an 83 percent increase in damage on fire fright firewalker times four and font of might and of course monochromatic maestro is buffing fire frights damage now if you were to throw in solar operative this is a five percent increase over monochromatic maestro but again you have to be solo to utilize this overall it's still very similar in damage output now some extra notes you can swap your healing grenades for fusion grenades if survivability is really not an issue for you these will still kickstart warring flames on kills therefore buffing your melee now the cooldown to healing grenades is similar to this as well the absolute best weapon in my opinion though besides fire fright to combine here is actually the new high impact lod brock now it's quite a chore to get the right roll but with the combo like osmosis and adrenaline junkie cascade point target lock this would actually be a phenomenal pick for this build granted it does require rng in the royal loot pool so good luck we will be reviewing this auto rifle very soon especially for pvp because it's popping off now you'll notice that this build doesn't utilize scorch or ignitions because of its focus on weapons instead of abilities is it possible that merciless may actually get 3.0 synergy in the future guys we're still waiting on 1000 voices to get that synergy right but who knows until that day though feel free to rock an incandescent heavy weapon or just don't really worry about building into those verbs as we really don't need them here for legend content where we were on light merciless easily outpaced barrier champion shields without an anti-champion mod granted this was not the case when we moved to master difficulty now it should be mentioned here if you have a combination of barrier and overload you won't be able to tackle it with this build alone for master content the mods just don't line up any other combo though you can make some weapon swaps and covering champions and we're covering overload with fire fright and you can take advantage of unstoppable grenade launcher with like a heavy gl most notably cry mutiny considering you can roll with things like incandescent and vorpal or even swap that out for swashbuckler now if you're looking for an anti-barrier weapon with osmosis legal action can actually roll with this albeit they're a lot more annoying to get at this point but maybe you have it in your vaults this is part of the reason why this build works best with a team but hopefully next season this build will be even more flexible for now though merciless is a dominant weapon to be using and these are just a number of ways to really buff the damage here so guys good luck have fun when grandmasters come i'm definitely going to be trying this one out myself fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right